Today I want to talk to you about the support structures of the clock including the back wall as you can see here and the face. So we'll take a look at these guys as they were constructed and I'll show you a couple of things that I'm doing different now with the gears after some responses from you guys. Let's get started at a bandsaw. This hole right here is on the back side of what will be a bearing there. This is the main shaft that goes all the way through the clock. It penetrates each wall and it spins the minute hand. So this is a critical shaft. I'm gonna need some bearings everywhere except for where it's attached to the minute hand. I've got a whole bunch of these bearings now after taking apart a massive commercial printer. And it fits this shafting, which I also have a lot of now. There must be 30 or more of these inside of that printer. I'm gonna be using this for my main drive shaft right through the middle of the clock. It's a 5 16 shaft, so approximately eight millimeters. That's gonna change the shape of that hole from what's in the plans. But of course, if you're using the plans, you can either purchase all the right material or modify and use what you have. So it looks like I need a 5 8 portioner bit, and then that'll leave me a nice little press fit to get the bearing in there. Now, I probably could have sanded this line over at the bandsaw, but this is where the clock stands. It's gonna stand up like this. I want that foot to be really flat because this surface is nice and firm. I can press this and get a nice straight line all the way across, and then I'm gonna slide it over and sand this one until they're both nice and flat and even, and hopefully that should make the clock stand up level. You can also get these little sanding drums, which I have for my drill press to help with some of these curved surfaces but the bandsaw seems to work pretty fine, so I didn't bother putting this in the drill press. All right. All right. Let's get this layer off. Oh man, I just remembered. I didn't put my blue tape on first. Well, that's just great. Well, as always is the case, when you make a mistake, you get punished for more manual labor. So, we're gonna take some mineral spirits, rub this guy down to get it cleaned off. Mmm, nice and chunky. This stuff might be expired, I don't know. We'll find out in a minute, I guess. I'm gonna use a rag and just rub it until I can get the paper off. You don't wanna use a shop rag like this because the red dye will bleed right into your workpiece. So use like a regular cotton rag. All right, I'm gonna let that sit on there for a minute or so and then I'll try to rub it off. I might have to use something else for removing this glue.
this is going to be my second or really maybe my third attempt at cutting out the face. I'm using this cherry hardwood and even though the inner layers are cherry plywood and the inner layers are, are what's called a veneer core which means they are also layers of cherry. Now uh, if you go to your local home center what you're going to find there the inner layers are just a cheap pine or some other wood that's really cheap for them to cut and then they'll put a nice veneer on the outside which they have cut as thin as they possibly can. The problem with that is it makes the face very fragile and the issue I'm having here is blowout. Now one of the things that I, two of the things that I do to prevent this is I will put tape on it, that's number one and I did that in this case and number two I put a backer board behind it so or a waste board so that when you cut through you have another piece of material to cut through and you have some supporting material around the edge of the hole. The problem here was a, it was an error on my part. I cut the large holes first and then when I went to the smaller drill bit I did not move the waste board and so now there is I've basically made that waste board ineffective for drilling these smaller holes. So on the second attempt I was moving the waste board around this is another layer I've glued on top and I put I drilled a hole there, but if you look carefully, let me just peel this back for you. If you look carefully right here, you can see I've still got just a small amount of blowout on what would be considered the face of the clock. And this part is really important. This is the part that people are going to touch and get really close to when they look at. So I really want this part to look good. So what I've done is instead of drilling the face from the back, which is what I originally planned to do, I'm going to have to drill the face from the front. So that if I do get any blowout on the back, uh, at least it'll be on the back of the face and not on the front. But I really don't want it on the back of the face either. So I'm going to take an extra precaution and I'm going to drill the pilot hole most of the way through just enough so that the foreshiner bit tip will stick out the bottom. And then I'll flip the whole piece over and uh, cut off the rest of the hole from the back. And this will allow me to get a nice sharp edge around the hole without cutting it out. I am doubling the work for drilling the holes, but this is such a critical piece. I'm going to go that extra mile and do that here. Uh, here we've got the smallest gear in the clock. It's got a modulus of 2.8. This is just the ratio between the number of teeth and the diameter of the gear, specifically the pitch diameter. So not the outer edges, but the edge where the gear is actually pushing. This gear has 10 teeth, and so 10 times 2.8 is going to tell me that there's a 28 millimeter pitch diameter. You can watch me cut this gear out, but basically I leave this long leg on here which makes it a little easier to, to cut out all of these small teeth without having to get my hands too close. And then I'll cut out the last two teeth at the very end so that I can hold the opposite end of the gear in order to cut it out. And here you go. Before I forget, I want to tell you, I actually made a quick and dirty circle drilling jig to drill these holes out along the side here. Uh, when I posted my first video on Patreon, I posted it there uh, almost a week early. I don't do that every time, but sometimes I post the videos early there. Pretty much the first person to see the video commented that, hey, I should make a circle drilling jig the same way I made a circle sanding jig. So I, I did that this time and the rest of the gears that I drilled out. I rotated them and drilled out these circles which you can see in the clip on the side there. So we're going to go ahead and sand these like I did before and I won't, I won't show you that part but I'll take you right over to the scroll saw for the internal cuts.